here we go. All right, we're recording. All right, so right now we're talking about a concept in architecture that is known as genus loci or genus loci, it's spelled G-E-N-U-S space L-O-C-I. And it's the spirit of place. It's kind of something that's hard to pin down. It's hard to, it's hard to say, this is what genus loci is all about. Um, so there's something that makes Philly, Philly, that makes New York, New York, that makes Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires. Um, and even though you might be able to get a cheesesteak in all of those places, having it at Pat and Gino's in Philly is its own particular special experience because of the sights, the sounds, the smell, the cheese whiz that's been ground into the pavement for generations. So this is a picture of North Philadelphia. Um, and the tall building in the background um, has a is actually in the midst of changing. And for the entirety of my time in Philadelphia, it's looked a lot like this. Um, it's kind of ingrained into my psyche that this is North Philly at Germantown Avenue. Um, like when I see it, I know I'm really close to, to being home. Um, it's this massive tower of a building with this terracotta. It's got graffiti all over it. It has always said forever boner and on the other side boner forever. It's always said that. Um, even when somebody tried to clean it up, they put it, uh, somebody put it back. This is a picture that for me really captures uh, Germantown Ave, which is one of those diagonal streets as it crosses Broad Street, the big street of Philadelphia. But there's also little details. So this is off of the L. And um, this is a mural by Jess X. Snow. And it's called A Daughter Migrates Towards the Mother Earth. Um, we have a really rich mural arts program which uses visualization to tell the story of communities and artists and places and history in the city of Philadelphia. And because we have a lot of empty sides of buildings, we have a bunch of amazing canvases to put artwork that tells the story of a community or of a culture, of our community, of our culture. Um, this is by Ian Pierce and Betsy Casanias, um, and it's called Sanctuary City, Sanctuary Neighborhood. This is at its dedication by Mural Arts Philadelphia. Um, this is up in North Philly. This is in uh, um, one of the Latinx communities of North Philadelphia. Um, I love how big this is and the fact that it just goes right over the windows. Um, so it's like, is this a building or a painting? Is it a canvas? Is it a facade? What is this? Right? But it's like the community, you don't have to, you can, you can start to feel what that community is like in the way that it describes this. Um, this is also an image of Philadelphia. This is really close to, to me. Um, this was the George Floyd uh, Black Lives Matter protest. This was the peaceful, this is the peaceful protest from that day. And there was a lot of news and images across the nation that showed a different picture of Philadelphia. But this is the Philadelphia that I know. Um, this was the hours of Philadelphia this summer. This was multiple weekends this summer. This is, this is six blocks away from me, south of me. Um, my neighbors were there, my neighbors who lived to the north of me and my neighbors that lived to the south of me. And it was amazing to be there in the time of COVID and everybody was respectful of everyone's space. Everybody, if you needed more space, you had more space. If you uh, needed water, people had brought bottles of water that they were giving out to people. If you, it was this moment that everybody kind of came together in the city of brotherly love and just felt very organic. This is the genus loci of my city, of your city that you now are a citizen of. Now we're back at Broad Street. 
same place, same buildings in this photo. Um, standing actually in the middle, this is a photograph from the parking median. Um, this is a picture from the Inquirer. And, you know, I, I have waited for traffic to go by in the traffic island so many times, I can't even count. But it tells a different story than the previous picture of this one. This is a side street of North Philadelphia. This is actually very close, very adjacent to where that other picture was that I just showed you. This, where that other picture was looking north, this picture is looking south. Um, you can actually tell that this is a tiny side street that exists between 16th and 17th because Philadelphia is a grid. And if you go all the way south, you can figure out where you are in the city based on what skyscrapers are to the south of you and the north of you. And this is just, you know, for me, if you need a quintessential picture of Philadelphia, it's this, right? It's row houses, it's uh, kids on bikes, people sitting on stoops, parking on the sidewalk, um, brick row houses. This is, this is Philly, right? This is what my neighborhood looks like. Um, each house is slightly different shade of red. And then, you know, somebody paints their house green and somebody else paints their house yellow. Um, so to really understand the spirit of place, you can't take one photograph. Andrew, this is an architecture. This is a picture of Johnny Cash and a guy wearing bib overalls and a really messed up car. I know. I mean, I am from the middle of nowhere, so I've got a reference the music of my roots a little bit. I can't deny who I am. Um, there's this song by Johnny Cash called One Piece at a Time. And it's about this guy who works at a Cadillac factory where they build Cadillacs. And he can't afford an entire Cadillac. So instead, over time, he takes all of the pieces home to build himself his own Cadillac. And what it means is that he has the most unique Cadillac ever. Like it's definitely a Cadillac. All those parts are Cadillac parts, but it's 20 years of Cadillac parts. Um, a fan of the song with the help of the music studio built the actual car. Like he made it up as a song, but it was so moving that somebody actually went ahead and did it. And so there's this like Frankenstein car. Um, there's all these different elements of style to a Cadillac, right? This kind of quintessential icon of Americana. And yet there's something deeper by seeing all of those parts and pieces kind of cobbled together. I think our challenge as visual communicators to go beyond the visual, to tell the complete story, like you guys said, right? To look beyond the frame of the photograph, to see more about what's going on, to really place yourself in the shoes of the person that took that photo, you have to challenge the frame of that photo. You have to challenge yourself to really put yourself in the shoes of the person making the photograph, not just taking the snapshot. And, and photographs have a lot of power. Images have a lot of power. Renderings have a lot of power. And if we don't use that power well, it's very easy to misuse it. Um, I'm going to show you guys some painful images from the summer. These are from mostly from the Inquirer off of Twitter as they were happening. This is Northern Liberties, where um, a group of protesters peacefully assembled and um, painted in yellow um, Black Lives Matter on, on Girard Avenue. And there's a line of cops there because on the other side of the line of cops is also a group of counter protesters also from the community who are armed with bats. Um, the way that you take these pictures tells a story and we can't hear what people are yelling and we can't see the entire picture. But the way that we render this image and the way that we represent people in our designs and our architecture and our buildings is it's important and it's important that we learn how to do it well and that we constantly question ourselves if we're doing it well if we just go to a site and we take a picture 
um, you don't know the story behind the picture, right? And you just see disaster, but you don't see the history. You don't see the layers of comments. You don't see the community members that are in there. And if it's a low quality picture without context or a label, you don't know what this is of. Likewise, if those images get broadcast beyond their author, they can get interpreted or misinterpreted. And so we design not because we love buildings, but because we love the space that they showcase because of the culture and the people that inhabit them. So showing people and who the people are really matters and is really important. And so this class is gonna be about that as well. It's not just gonna be about how to do Photoshop. This is a photograph of MSB, the Municipal Services Building, which is the center of a lot of the unrest on that same day where I showed you guys a picture where I was, I was at the Philadelphia Museum of Art steps. Uh, I had students who were walking home from that protest who got caught in the unrest. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of voices there. And I'm, I'm trying to speak about this in a way where I'm trying to talk about the importance of the image. It's not really at this moment, it doesn't really matter to me which side of this you're on or if it matters to you what side of this I'm on. What I'm trying to say is that images are important and they have power. And if you take them well and you know how to build them, you can do it responsibly. And if you don't, have respect for that responsibility, it can be misinterpreted rather easily. So this picture is taken by a Philadelphia Inquirer photographer um, and it was widely published because the other photo that goes along with this is this one. And that's a sta statue of Mayor Frank Rizzo who is also the police commissioner and is, you can find the quotes on record as being a, a pretty racist guy. Simultaneously, he's also really important to the Italian community of Philadelphia. So it's a really difficult figure to have a conversation around. Um, I have friends that fall on both sides of whether this should be a statue or not. But I will tell you, as you look at it with a sense of scale, you know that those scale figures, aka the construction workers, are probably between five feet and six feet tall. And so you can see that that statue is quite large, larger than life, like one and a half times larger. You can also see that it's removal and the photographer didn't set up a tripod, but the photographer planted themselves and then took the picture before and after. And there's something about that single spotlight showing a light on what doesn't exist anymore that really gives you a sense of what is outside of the frame of the photograph. So we're not gonna deal with, we're not gonna, we're, we're just learning how to deal with this. So, so I'm not gonna say that we need to wade into the deep responsibility and discussion, but also I'm not gonna deny that what we're doing is a part of that discussion. And so what we are going to do as we make our way through this semester is talk about how are things represented and why does the way that they're represented matter? So for example, Scale figures are a really important thing to have in renderings. We call them scale figures. We call them entourage. Everybody else in the world calls them the people in your drawing. And they're the reason why we make architecture. And there's a wide variety of them that are that of, of people, pre-cut out people that are widely available to download on the internet. And um, there was, a, there was a couple of companies and schools of architecture and designers that decided it would be better if they were just freely available. So everybody didn't cut out their own, that there was, there was a lot of good ones. So they made them freely available and downloadable. And those um, schools and companies were from the Nordic regions, right? So they're like Denmark, Sweden, Norway, that kind of area. Um, so it meant that it was a lot of Danes and Swedes not a lot of Philadelphians. So all of a sudden I watched computer renderings 
of projects in Philadelphia populated with Danes and Swedes. And just, I mean, fundamentally, we wear different pants. You know, it's just, we grind the cheese whiz into the sidewalk differently. But it also means that the preponderance of them were white. And Philadelphia is really diverse. And it's really weird to see an entire space rendered with just white people. That's not the city I grew up in. That's not the block that I grew up in, uh, that, that I live in right now. That's not the city that I know. And so representing people that way is really important because I've gone to community meetings in my own community, which is predominantly Black, African-American, BIPOC, and seen renderings with people that look like me, dressed like me. And I'm not the typical person in my neighborhood, or at least I wasn't. So the way that we represent these things, it's very sneaky, but it's important that we keep our eyes open to it, that we critique it. And this semester, as we get into Photoshop, I want you to know Photoshop well, so you can pull things apart, put them back together, look at why they are the way they are, why these spaces that we know and we love and are meaningful to us have meaning. So we're gonna use Photoshop to kind of dissect and reconstruct these, not unlike Johnny Cash's Cadillac, but you guys are gonna make them your own. And I'm hoping that you will feel free to bring your own flavor to it. Maybe stumble, maybe trip and stumble because this is a place where you should do that because you'll learn how to get back up. And that's the most important part to learn. You'll learn how to rely on each other to do it. And I'm hoping that you don't feel like you're asking me a quote, dumb question when you don't know how to do it. Um, these images are put together from a lot of thinking that I did this summer, but this is not a talk that's brand new. I give this talk to the beginning of every single semester. Um, when I first came to design school, I thought I was gonna design really pretty pictures, kick-ass buildings, People were going to pay me a lot of money to do that. And I realized that architecture is way more sacred and much more important. And our profession has a much deeper meaning than just doing kick-ass form. You can make meaningful form and it can look good and it can inspire other people and it can communicate culture. So I'm going to just end the recording here. And...